name is Annette Kirabo. I'm an associate professor at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And uh, I'm here with Dr. Pila Alkaid from Tufts University and Dr. Suzanne uh, Sattler from Medical University of Grass. And we are here at the BCVS a conference in Boston 2003. And we are here to highlight session nine that highlights uh, a, a, a very exciting and upcoming topic on, uh, on cardioimmunology in heart disease. And uh, so one of the speakers is uh, Dr. Pilar al -Qaid. And I'll, uh, Dr. Pilar al -Qaid, you have a very exciting topic on T-cell immune responses in the, at the heart of remodeling. That is really fasc a fascinating topic. Can you give us some highlights about what uh, of course. this topic is about? Yes, of course. Um, so we study how the immune system interfaces with cardiac remodeling. And the reason of why the title of my talk is uh, T-cells at the heart of remodeling is because of our pre previous work finding that heart failure is a disease of the cardiac muscle but indeed a lot of immune cells, and we will, we will hear a little bit more about uh, Suzanne's work as well, about all the immune cells that are not just T cells. Mm -hmm. But our work highlights that uh, T cells are indeed infiltrated in the heart as the heart um, remodels, and they're, they're, they're critical for that process. So there are many mechanisms that we're investigating, and one aspect of remodeling is uh, cardiac fibrosis and uh, our work focuses on understanding this uh, fibroblast T-cell interface within the heart and how the fibroblasts make a lot of extracellular matrix and they need the T-cells to do so. And the T-cells also sense the fibroblast signals and become more activated. So in a way, fibrosis also contributes to the immune response. Fantastic. So. Uh I have one, I have a question, a follow-up question. So remodeling comes in several ways. Some remodeling is good and some remodeling is bad. And some T cells also have quite fu different functions that can oppose each other. So can you give us a little bit more on which specific T cells are playing what role in what remodeling and how we can re reverse this for therapeutics and maybe yes. next steps as well? So that is an excellent question, and I think that's the question that many in the field are trying to, to answer, and, and it, it fits very well in the HA mission of personalized medicine and how to treat cardiovascular disease and promote cardiovascular health. Because indeed, uh, several studies show that we've shown that T cells are but in one type of chronic remodeling, mm -hmm. that, the, that fibrotic chronic remodeling. But indeed, T cells are necessary for, for the fibrotic response post-injury. So if you have an infarct, you need the T cells to promote that quick, uh, sort of like repair fibrosis. And that's how the immune system evolves, uh, to protect us from pathogens and to also help with healing post-injury. So I think in those two processes, the types of T cells are different, but also the types of fibrosis. Mm. We have this repair fibrosis, and then we have this uh, replacement fibrosis that is more chronic as well. I think in terms of the T cell subsets, uh, our work that, we, that is highlighted in session nine is about a specific type of T cell that makes a cytokine in there from gamma that uh, seems to be detrimental for that chronic remodeling. Uh, whether this is the same in other types of fibrosis or other etiologies of, of heart failure with the fibrotic response is different, that's what we're trying to get to and how the immune cells coordinate uh, that response. And that's something that will, that will be highlighted also in session nine. That is fascinating. So we'll get back to you, but uh, we will, um, that another speaker who has a very interesting topic on a different type of cells that contribute to cardiac injury, dendritic cells, and dendritic cells are involved in activating T cells. Can you give a highlight of what you'll be speaking about? I certainly can. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, 
the, the overall premise of our work is very much overlapping with uh, Pilar's work. It's the, the concept that autoimmune mechanisms are important and are involved in the progression uh, towards heart failure from probably a range of heart diseases. Uh, in my talk, I'm focusing on ischemic heart disease. And uh, we see several hallmarks of autoimmune responses in heart failure. This includes autoantibodies and autoreactive T cells, and they are antigen specific. And this antigen specificity comes from the dendritic cells, because the dendritic cells are the cell type that is triggering antigen specific immune responses. So we have focused our work, and I'll be talking about that in, in the session, on, on dendritic cells and uh, on a specific subset of dendritic cells, and these are called cross primers. And the interesting aspect of these cells is that they can induce both autoreactive helper T cells, which will then um, induce B cells to produce autoantibodies, as well as cytotoxic T cells, which can directly cause tissue damage in the myocardium. That is fascinating. It is so interesting how you get, bring in the con concept of autoimmune disease, which is a totally different topic. And do we have any idea what autoantigens we are talking about here? You know, it, do you have any specific idea? I know you talked about autoreactive T cells, but what, what, what ideas do you have about potentially self-antigens that are playing a role? So we know about a lot of uh, self-antigens already. Cardiac myosin is the very first one that comes to mind, simply because what we know is that there is no central tolerance against cardiac myosin. There is a process when the immune system develops that, that T cells are being presented to all the various antigens that exist in the body. And for some of them, this process is missing and it's missing for cardiac myosin. So cardiac myosin is in itself very immunogenic and this is most likely what starts off this process. But then there is another concept we know in immuno immunology and it's called epitope spreading. So if you have persistent immune mediated damage, eventually a lot of different antigens are being released and can turn immunogenic. And we know that there is autoantibodies against cardiac troponin. We know there is autoantibodies against all sorts of uh, channels in the cardiomyocytes, for example. So there are a lot of different antigens uh, we should be looking at there. Very fascinating. It, and it's, it's really difficult to really think about immunity and autoantigens without think about autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, can you both either Pilar or Suzanne give some highlight about, you know, the potential cross-linking between autoimmune disease per se and heart disease and how the immune cells might be playing a role? Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a fascinating topic. And if, if you look at patient data, in fact, uh, patients that have chronic autoimmune disease uh, you know, autoimmune diseases are complex mm -hmm. uh, based on, on antigen specificity, as uh, Suzanne said. But uh, there, there's data out there that patients with autoimmune disease are at high risk of developing cardiovascular disease, and in particular heart disease. One that comes to mind is lupus, another one is uh, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis. So I think that that is a very good example of how even if the antigens are different, if you have rheumatoid arthritis and you're having autoantibodies or, or T cells specific gear, gear to destroy the joint, mm -hmm. how it could be this molecular mimicry that perhaps those, those same T cells are able to recognize some of those epitopes in the heart as well and damage. So that's, that's one way to see that. The other way to see that is a, whether once you have some type of cardiac inflammation, we know that heart failure in particular is a very chronic disease, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you take it later when the patients see the, the doctor the first time and they're diagnosed, that might be too late to capture all those antigens that you could, you know, you could prevent the disease. Yes. But it, it, would be, it could be possible that there's also some, some cardiac trigger that, that also impacts systemic autoimmunity. I, maybe Susan has 
more to add into this because that's her specific the, area of expertise. The, the other aspect where this overlap I think is very, very important to consider is when we start thinking about therapy. Mm. Because um, immunomodulatory therapy might just be, at least in, in a way of supporting uh, um, existent heart failure therapy, might be the way forward for yet another supportive type of therapy. Because depending on what other risk factors heart failure patients have, they now receive various different supportive therapies. And immunomodulation modulation might be what's... Um, suitable for people with raised inflammatory levels, for example. So we've seen a lot of immunomodulatory trials happening already. Unfortunately, they haven't given all that very exciting, well, not exciting, but uh, convincing results yet. We believe that is because um, they have been performed before we have really understood the immune response after, let's say, a myocardial infarction. And uh, the immune system has been targeted too soon or too excessive because immediately after an infarction you need to have a wound healing response which is uh, essentially an immune response mm -hmm. and you can't immunosuppress then but then later on when we're dealing with chronic autoimmunity this is where immunomodulation could be coming in so I think cardiologists have to learn a lot from rheumatologists yes. when it comes to therapy. Yeah, but we have also have a, another concept of immune suppression. You know, there is a, a whole field of, of cardio-oncology, for example, mm -hmm. and oh. you need a strong <laughs> immune system to fight cancer. Mm -hmm. So where is a field going to integrate all these things, immune suppression, autoimmunity, uh, with a heart at the center of it? Do you have any ideas where... I, I mean, I, I think the field is going in the right direction because the first thing that we need to do is to acknowledge that, yeah. right? Acknowledge that heart disease is not exclusively a disease of the cardiac muscle, right? That might be the trigger, mm -hmm. but it's multi-organ. And you, Annette, from your own work, you, you've done a lot of immune work in the kidney. Mm -hmm. And we know the kidney heart crosstalk is not only immune cardiac crosstalk, right? So I think where the field is going is that we really need to acknowledge that yeah. this is a complex syndrome mm -hmm. and that many organs and systems are in interplay. We need to do a lot of basic research yeah. and we need to have access to patient samples to personalize those types of treatment, you know, whether you target the immune system first or whether you target uh, the kidney. There are a lot of drugs that work very well for, for the kidney, for the heart, and some of them affect the immune system, some of them don't, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's, that's where I think the field is going. And then if, if I had to pick what my wish would be for the field, it would be once we know all the details, yeah. could we immunize for cardiovascular disease, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That would be the, that, that would be to me like the, you know, the one million question. I think we will be able to do it when, yeah. when as, as we keep progressing. But And that really highlights the importance of this specific session nine, you know, that we are going to have of, of Im cardio immunology because immune cells are only cells that go everywhere. They go to the brain, the kidney, the heart, and in terms of looking at the integration of all the organs, I think the immune system is a great bet to, to target. Thank you so much. So we are, again, we are here at uh, the American Heart Association BCVS uh, 2023 conference in Boston. And please look forward, uh, look forward to our session uh, nine, focusing on cardio immunology in the heart. Thank you.